What are the rules for using music, even your own music, in a podcast? Hi, I'm attorney Gordon Firemark, and this is Asked and Answered, where I answer your entertainment law questions to help you take your career and business to the next level. So, one of the most common questions that comes up when I talk to podcasters about their legal obligations and rights has to do with music. Sometimes they want to use pre-existing music and they don't understand why it's so hard or impossible. And sometimes they're actually creating their own music and they still have concerns and questions. Here's one of those. Troy reached out to me. I'm a composer who will be using my own music for an upcoming podcast that I'll be hosting. I'm a member of BMI, and I was wondering if you're familiar with the process of submitting cue sheets for podcasting, or that if podcasts are even something BMI tracks. I'm wondering how BMI would track podcasting and how one would report for royalties. And this really illustrates why it's so difficult for podcasters to use music in their programs. Even the musicians who create the music sometimes can't figure out the web of rights and permissions that are needed. So first I'm going to reply to Troy's basic questions about cue sheets. Cue sheets are used by ASCAP and BMI and CSAC and Global Music Rights and all of the other performing rights societies around the world to, uh, to track which songs are used and how much in films and television shows and other media productions. The producer is supposed to complete the, the cue sheet and send it to the applicable rights organization, which then is responsible for tracking and allocating license fees for the public performances of the music in their catalogs. A songwriter becomes a member of one of these societies so that he or she can get paid for those kinds of uses, things like radio and TV airplay, or when songs are performed in coffee houses and concert venues and so on. But these performing rights organizations don't collect for other kinds of uses, and some of those kinds of use need to be directly licensed by the copyright owner. So, my first point to Troy is that he's asking how he can account to and pay someone else for the right to use his own music in a podcast. Wow. Ultimately, I don't even know if these societies have a mechanism for tracking and collecting on, on uh, cue sheets for podcasts. If they do, it's not a very common thing. But more importantly, these organizations only collect for the so-called small performing rights that I mentioned. But a podcast is so much more than a single play of a song, like on the radio. There are six different kinds of rights involved when you put a piece of music into a podcast episode. First, there's the synchronization right, the right to combine the musical composition with other material into a larger work, the podcast episode. Then, there's the master use, the right to combine the particular recording of the song with that other material. Then there's the download right for both the composition and for the master. When you download the episode, you're making a copy of the song and recording that are embodied in it. Now, the streaming right for the composition is yet another. Now this arguably is the thing for which ASCAP or BMI or CSAC or GMR, these organizations, do collect royalties. And then finally there's the streaming right for the recording. And that may or may not be something that's within the purview of an outfit called Sound Exchange to collect. So now you can see that for a single song in a single episode of a podcast, you might have five or six stops shopping just to get the basic permission that you need, which is why using music in podcasts is so darn challenging and, frankly, expensive. And it's why podcasts are still mostly sticking to royalty-free music or material that's been composed specifically for their shows, like what Troy is talking about. Now, I know all this might be a bit disappointing, but there's cause for optimism. There are moves afoot to create one-stop libraries of podcast-friendly music that can be used without all this hassle. Now, you might not get the satisfaction of using the Rolling Stones in your episode, but there is some mainstream music finding its way into these libraries. So if you search for podcast music, you might just get what you need. Well, that's it for this session of Asked and Answered. If you have a question for me, just visit firemark.com questions and let me know. See you next time.